This is what happens when you follow bad advice on YouTube. An expensive mid-range PC becomes completely unusable and had its operating system basically obliterated. Whoa. I uncovered the, well, it's basically a scam at this point, and I covered it well in this video that has the potential to impact millions of users. But software-based scams aren't the only thing that can turn your system from its powerhouse glory to a complete paperweight without this fix, which could cost you as little as a few dollars. Not properly shutting down your system at the wrong time is a common one, we've all had to do that from time to time, or even something you can't control, like a drive failure or an obscure conflict. There's so many things that can destroy your system, it's more of a when it will happen than an if it will happen. And the worst thing about it is twofold. The most expensive thing about your computer likely isn't the CPU. It isn't the GPU. It isn't any singular component that needs to be replaced. And in most situations like this, those things are typically fine, which is great. But the thing that you're likely protecting the least right now is going to be the most expensive for you to replace. So I'm going to show you what is most at risk in your system, as well as the cheap, simple ways you can protect them today. Because if you don't, well, at this point, you kind of only have yourself to blame. Let me explain. Are you tired of overpaying for your favorite games and essential software? Then you need to check out whokeys.com. In fact, let me show you the benefits and how you could save. There's over a hundred games for you to browse for cheap. You can save every month on your Office subscription, even fixing the Windows watermark, ruining your game capture and limiting your Windows customization. So let's get a Windows key. I especially like that you can use PayPal for easy, secure checkout. And using coupon code TL25 gets you 25% off these already low prices. All you need to do is paste your key to become fully activated. And TechLens subscribers like the fast key delivery and peace of mind that I use the service personally. So what are you waiting for? Start saving money and visit the Hookie sponsor link below. Luna, hey, you're cute. Do me a favor, think of your most important files on your computer and the times where they were the most vulnerable. These could be school assignments, project files right before a deadline, tax documents, irreplaceable memories. Because according to a May 22 report from Statista, 94% of people could be better about protecting what is most important to them. But the number that scares me more, actually, is a quarter just YOLOing it. Good job, because data on this is extremely concerning. 6% of all computers per year suffer losses, 43% from hardware failure, which is something you cannot control. And 93% of companies close when they experience large data losses. And the fix for this can be extremely costly. So given that these are the things that you should probably care the most about, the things that are going to be the most expensive to replace when you run into these issues, and anyone that has a computer and uses it is inherently at risk. It raises the question, how safe is your setup? Because nearly everyone is unnecessarily leaving themselves wide open to losing the things that are most important to them. The things that can't just be replaced same day. That's exactly what I want to help you protect yourself from today, now and forever. Because the obvious answers can have quite major drawbacks. But before we get into how best to protect yourself, we need to go back to this video and explain what happened here and the amazing advice some of you gave in the comment section. In this video, we uncovered how people are breaking their own systems by following bad advice on YouTube. And I ended up doing exactly the same thing to show you how easy it was. But as a bonus, I had to include a bit about recovering your data. My thought was, hey, if I could save even one person with this advice, I've done my part to make someone's day a little bit better. And the thing that really annoyed me, to be honest, is the amount of people that commented saying that they fell victim to this. It had happened to them. So I'm super happy that I did that. But how do you make sure your important stuff can withstand a major catastrophe like this? Or even a complete operating system drive failure? Especially as most people don't prioritize what's actually important when they buy storage. They focus on the wrong thing. And even the way I showed you in the previous video, I mentioned that post-disaster recovery won't work for everyone. So how do we make sure it will? Well, let's take a look at an expensive option before we look at the cheap solution. 
So what we're essentially trying to do is if your operating system becomes incapacitated, let's say, in any way, shape or form, that you'll be able to get the data off of your system. But given that Windows 10 is reaching end of support relatively soon, and Windows 11 seems to default encrypt the drive sometimes, it means that we need a recovery solution that can handle an encrypted drive or a complete drive failure. So one of the options that should be quite obvious to a lot of people is cloud storage. And that will facilitate that in a lot of good ways. One of the things that I like about the cloud storage option is that you can allow for file syncing. It means that you'll have backups on not only the cloud, but other machines that you own. But it comes with a few cons. One of the ones that honestly just annoys me is that it's an ongoing cost, especially if you want to increase the capacity. I did have a look at the free tiers for a lot of these providers, but they end up being in like the three to 20 gigabyte range, which you're gonna fill that up pretty quickly. But if I want to go any more than that, honestly, it's going to start costing a decent amount of money per month per year. So although cloud storage can be a great option, and I do recommend it as part of a larger solution, Cloud is not the first thing I would do because of the ongoing cost, the slow speed, and well, just corporate fuckery. So let's talk about the cheap solution you should start doing today. So let's talk about how best to configure your system for protection, which you really should do as soon as possible. Before we take a look at the two different cheap options in front of us and the baller solution I have hidden in my closet. Most of you are going to be on Windows, so that's what I'll show you. But the problem is essentially right here. Everywhere you download, store, or use your files, every one of these locations is at risk, as it's likely on your operating system drive. If something goes wrong with your system, at worst, everything in here is as good as gone, or at best, will take you a significant amount of time to recover. But there's a very simple fix for this, which most people don't do. All you need to do is right click on each of these locations and move them to a different place, somewhere off of your operating system drive, which now means everything you care about is completely untouched if you run into issues and has the added benefit of the operating system not wearing out the drive where your most important data is stored. Because the thing you have to remember is every time your operating system or an application writes something to disk, it is chipping away at the drive's life expectancy, bringing it closer and closer to dying. And most people don't look at the drive's endurance rating when making a decision, which is one of the specs that you should care most about, making it last longer and provide better value. So keep that in mind when implementing this solution, which is just so simple. And one of those things that if you implement now, will save you a whole world of pain in the future. It's such a minor investment and the benefits will be so great, but it isn't quite good enough yet. So let's take a look at a few unique ways that you can implement this so you can figure out what makes sense for you. The simplest way to do this would be to install another drive in your system. Whether you replace your operating system drive with a cheap but good low capacity one, or end up getting a spinning drive for the many terabytes of data. Something like this. If you're subscribed to this channel, I bet you even have another drive on hand that you can do this with right now. But bear in mind, even though moving all of your libraries off of your operating system drive will protect your data from system issues and OS drive failures, there's nothing stopping this drive from dying. So you want to make sure that this is not your only copy. But those solutions need to be added into the machine. What if you wanted all of your data on the go with you? That could be extremely useful. Well, that brings us onto these guys. It's worth mentioning at this point that everything that you're gonna see in this video was bought by me and none of them are sponsored. I actually don't have a contact at any of these companies, but everything will be linked below for you to check out. So let's start with the more interesting one right here, as this is going to be more applicable to my core audience. Over the past few years, M2 SSDs like these have become more common in computers and become a lot cheaper. The chances are if you've built or bought a computer in the last few years, you probably have at least one of these in your system. And this is my favorite external enclosure, allowing you to drop in an SSD like this and it will treat it like a USB drive. You've essentially made the best USB thumb drive you could possibly buy with most of the speed, all of the endurance benefits, upgradability and less cost. Something like this is fantastic. 
I actually have four of these. It has a great controller, good thermals, and even works with many video cameras and has an optional sled for some major convenience points. It's crazy that this is under $25. Just point your libraries to it like we did before. And now you have a portable version instead of it being inside your computer. But that becomes its own disadvantage here as you'll need this plugged into your machine to use it or copy files over to it later. And raises the question, what if someone just like stole it? You lose everything and they have access to your data now. Let's fix that. One thing that you could do is enable BitLocker encryption in Windows, which can also be used on Linux and Mac OS, protecting your data. You can also automatically back up your drive whenever it's plugged into your machine, potentially putting you in the top 6% of all users. Portable, secure, and backed up. Not bad at all. This works great as a cheap solution, but if you don't already have a drive to put in it, it can increase the cost. Which brings us onto the $20 all-in solution, a high-performance USB drive, which fundamentally is actually really the same thing, just not as fast and probably won't last as long. But it's super convenient, especially going from Mac to Windows, having the Type-C and the Type-A is really handy. And these guys, for a good high-performance USB drive, they've come down in price so much recently, to the point where an even better drive from SanDisk is like $20 for 128 gigabytes, with faster speeds than nearly all other drives this small. So we have a solution that you could probably implement today with no additional cost, as long as you have a spare drive and can add it into your machine. We also have a $20 solution and a $25 plus solution, both of these being portable or potentially portable. But what would be the best solution and what is hiding in my closet. This is your next step up if you want to take storage seriously. Here we have a couple different NAS enclosures I'll link below. This one is for three and a half and two and a half inch drives for high capacity and this one is all M.2 storage for speed. Because they are connected to the network and not an individual computer, it means that you can implement a solution that we've covered today for every machine you own. And there are also other benefits as well. Direct recording of home security footage, media servers, a game library for multiple computers, the list goes on and on. But in an ideal world, you would use this back up to the NAS and also have a cloud storage solution with that kind of setup. That provides you with a solution that covers the 3 2 1 rule of data backup, but the cost could be very, very high and for potentially as low as 20 to $25, you'd really honestly have to be crazy not to implement this as your first line of defense or add it to an existing backup solution because the alternative is something nobody wants to experience. Which means you should check out this video about how people are breaking their own systems through bad advice. And if I did what they recommended without a plan for when something goes wrong, like we've covered today, well, I don't really want to think about that scenario, which is kind of the point. You can't protect yourself from system issues and drive failures after the fact, but you can do it today. So check out everything you might need in the description below. And otherwise, guys, share, like, subscribe. They are always appreciated. And I hope you have an amazing day.